So the trials and charges for those involved in January 6th Capitol riots continue. Uh, and as such, we continue to find disturbing links between rioters, police, and of course, white nationalists and white supremacist groups, of course. Uh, the newest link was recently reported by the Orlando Sentinel. And uh, you're not going to be surprised here. Uh, they write that the husband of a Florida sheriff's deputy who was recently charged for participating in the U.S. Capitol riot was also once the editor for a blog founded by someone uh, going by the name of Augustus Sol Invictus, a prominent white nationalist. Invictus, whose birth name is actually a the much less cool sounding Austin Gillespie, uh, played a key role in the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. You know, remember the rally where uh, they donned tiki torches and they were like, uh, the Jews can't replace us. And the one where Donald Trump said, oh, there are very fine people on both sides. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay, so that guy. Uh, now, he's also a former U.S. Senate candidate who once claimed that he sacrificed a goat and drank his blood. Great. Good old, good old ghost sacrifice there. Yeah, that's, that's good old fine people on both sides. Mr. Mr. Invictus, the, the goat. The goat killer. Anyway. So now that person. Um, so l let's go back to this. Uh, this deputy's husband. All right. So now that blog where the deputy's husband uh, wrote uh, was an editor there um, was called the revolutionary conservative. Mm. Ironic. They claim to present. Brutally honest commentary on politics unfit for traditional conservative media, which is focusing on the defense of the West. There's some contradictions here. For one, there's nothing revolutionary about conservatism. All right. The conservatism as an ideology is all about literally protecting the status quo. And or bringing us back to what was the status quo before. Okay. Uh, it's in the name. Conserva. Autism, conserve. They want to conserve the status quo, where essentially white people uh, were on charge, black people and women were second class citizens, or or if you go far back enough, black people were slaves, uh, and then women were still second class citizens. So you know, there's there's that, there's that. Um, now it's not exactly like I said, revolutionary guys. That whole conservatism. Thing. Uh, but tangent aside, this gets more complicated. All right. So now the Orange County Sheriff's Office is now investigating Deputy Sarah Jackman uh, and what she knew about her husband's participation in this riot. Uh, so now the man, of course, in question is Arthur Jackson. I'm sorry, Jackman. Arthur Jackman uh, was arrested in March and charged with obstruction of an official proceeding knowingly entering or remaining in any district building or grounds without lawful authority and engaging in disruptive and disorderly conduct. Uh, Jackman did some things. Uh, he did some things that were not good. Uh, now, along with his white nationalist bona fides, Arthur Jackman was also reportedly vice president of the Central Florida chapter of the Proud Boys and one of a handful of the group members charged in the riot. So we got a cop, we got a Proud Boy who are obviously married and linked to a far-right blog that often features anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, and misogynistic rhetoric. Uh, in a statement, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, they investigated her so far and said that it's been told by the FBI that there's no evidence or indication that Sarah Jackman had anything to do with the events at the Capitol on January 6th or as a member of any extremist organization, and that would be concerning if a deputy associated with the people or groups uh, that exhibit extremist ideology. But you would think that since they live in the same house, they're married, they she might have something to know about his associations with the far right or might be associated herself. Uh, oh, look, maybe she didn't talk about it. Maybe he lied about it. Uh, maybe she didn't ask. I don't know. People do that, right? Uh, but police reform advocate TJ Legacy Cole brings up a good point about this. He said that the agency's decision to, de to investigate one of its own deputies, instead of calling for an independent probe, Raises some questions. Yes. Uh, questions indeed. Questions uh, arise from the fact that we do know that members of the far right 
have infiltrated police and the military as well. Uh, and we know that those members of, of the far right happen to be a little bit more accommodating to members uh, those are, or, you know, that are in uh, uh, positions of power, like within the police department, uh, are deferential to their friends uh, inside, of, like movements like the Proud Boys, uh, and so they've gotten together and they've went after, or or at least turned their back when Proud Boys would go after and and attack BLM members, uh, and so we also know that the cops, as a result of these associations, do have a history of covering for the far right. And that generally when police investigate themselves, they tend to find themselves not guilty of any sort of wrongdoing. It's kind of weird how that works out, you know, uh, every time. It's sort of like companies that regulate themselves. They never seem to find that they've done anything wrong. It's weird. So strange. Uh, it's almost as if you need somebody to police the police to make sure that, you know, they don't get out of hand. Uh, or, you know, we can go a little bit further as well. Uh, is for the links of the Proud Boys and the white nationalists. I, I don't think anybody here is going to be all that shocked uh, about this story. It's more evidence the police do need to be disbanded and reformed. I know that sounds crazy to some of you, uh, but you got to do something to get all the white nationalists and racists out of policing. If you don't want things like George Floyd to happen again, then you've got to do something big. You got to get all the racists white nationalists gone you also have to completely change the mission and goals of any sort of department that you would use to replace the police because nobody's saying well there's a few people that are saying that but uh most people are saying we don't want to get rid of any sort of you know law enforcement well, there has to be some sort of way to you know protect people and enforce laws the police right now are not cutting it they're not doing that job uh what we need to do is to actually create something that protects regular people and that doesn't just serve as enforcers to the, you know, for the top 1% or the, the incredibly wealthy, the corporations and things like that, but actually something that uh, has the goal of stopping actual crime and protecting neighborhoods instead of oppressing them and using them, as we've seen in, in many situations, as sources of revenue for the police department. So on that, I mean, obviously we'd have a, a long way to go. Uh, but I would settle for right now, at least for the moment, making sure that no white supremacists uh, or racists or open racists get inside of our police departments. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.